Today's gospel story about Jesus accepting Simon's dinner invitation and of the woman who proceeds to kiss and wash the Lord's feet appears in all four gospels. But if you were to read this narrative in the other gospels, you would realize that each author puts his unique spin on the storyline according what he identified as relevant or significant. Where, when, and how the scene took place, as well as the identity of the woman who carried out the action, is different in Luke's version as compared to Mark, Matthew, or John. For example, it is only in Luke's gospel that the woman who washed and dried the Lord's feet and then anointed them is identified as a sinner. Jesus really drives this point by emphasizing that her sins were not few, but many. In the other Gospels, the only identity given to the character is that she's a woman and that she anointed his head with expensive ointment, not his feet. And yeah, there was some rabble about how expensive the ointment was and all that stuff. Not important. The essential theological matter in the other three Gospels specifically relate her action to Jesus' upcoming crucifixion. But we would all be missing the point today if in the Gospel of Luke, we simply focused on the nature of the woman's sinfulness instead of looking and focusing on her public display of love and hospitality. The story focuses on the behavior and the care of a woman, a sinner like any one of us, who lives her life trying to be the best person she can be on any given day. The story also focuses on the Lord's reaction to her action. How? With forgiveness. How? With healing. How? With love. I want to draw your attention to verse 38 of the seventh chapter of Luke that says, and I quote, As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Listen to the poetry in that. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. One can come up with dozens of possible reasons to try and explain why the sinner, a powerless and voiceless woman living on the margins of society, honored the Lord by standing behind him, weeping, washing his feet with those tears, and drying them with her hair. Why the tears? Why the ointment? Why those gestures? You know, too many people throughout history have focused more on the possible sins committed by the woman rather than her gestures of love, which reminds me of that one little commandment, love one another as I have loved you. There are some biblical scholars who have said that she acted without expecting anything in return, unlike other biblical characters who intentionally approach the Lord seeking a response to their urgent need. I'm one of those biblical characters. Help God, I need some help today. Today's gospel story, for me, is a great Father's Day story. You know, there's so much of my own father that I see in the characters of the, women, of the woman and of Jesus. 
I realize that there are some dads out there who are perhaps more like the Simon character. And we are called by God to honor them in one of those commandments as well. May not have been the best dad, but that's your dad. My dad is a kind of guy whose hospitality and generosity seems to be over the top at times, even with strangers. You know, dad's one of those guys that, you know, he's not one that gives lavish gifts. He's a simple kind of person. Papa will talk to anyone. He'll just meet someone, waiting for mom at the mall maybe, or while he's doing shopping himself. And whether this person is passing by, sitting on his bench or not, says, hey, you want a cup of coffee? Let's talk. That's my dad. He's also the kind of guy that if he's eating a full sandwich at a restaurant, would look over, or on a plane. The plane is the one that always gets me. I brought a sandwich, are you hungry? <laughs> you know, he has a spirit of trust. And so people just share their life story with him in a minute. He'll tell you later that he met a new friend. Drives my mother crazy. My dad is both the sinner woman in today's story and Jesus, at least in my version of it. Because in addition to his hospitality and love, Maximo is a forgiving man. Okay, you know, he's a little bit pig-headed. He'll hold a grudge for a little while. I didn't say he was Jesus, I said he was like Jesus. <laughs> There's something more, though, in how my papa treats people that reminds me of Jesus in today's story, and that is that he gives without expecting anything in return. For real. You know, I observed my father a lot in that regard, as I observed the sinner woman today in the story. She didn't come asking. She came giving. Treating others with dignity and respect are perhaps two of the most transformative elements of hospitality and love. It is interesting to me that when men attempt bold gestures, I would say, of love toward others, especially when the other is of a different gender, society generally considers there to be an ulterior motive perhaps a little romantic intention on the sideline, instead of a simple act of kindness. On the other hand, when women attempt bold gestures toward a man or someone of another gender, people, especially men in our society, consider them to be act acting out of desperation. Oh, she must need a guy or whatever. Or maybe even psychosis. Gotta be crazy to like me. So, I would ask why we do that, particularly after reading the story today in the Gospel, I would ask, what is your response to the woman's gesture of love and hospitality? As I told the kids, would you get on your knees and wipe someone's feet with your hair? Well, I can't, but some people here can. Would you do it? What would move you to do that? Was there romantic love on her mind? Was her act an act of desperation? Was there gratitude in that action? Or penitence? She was identified as a sinner woman. Or was it just that she had sufficient grace to do something big for something good, realizing that her world was too small a place for anything but love? The woman cried and used those tears to give hospitality, to give love. There are times when our tears are not tears of pain or frustration, but tears that just clean your soul out. Tears of joy, hope, solidarity in response to the providence 
of God's abundant grace. In Luke's version of the story, we're invited to be more concerned about God's grace than focusing on the woman's right or wrong behavior. I ask you to ponder on Jesus' response. Forgiveness, healing, compassionate love. I, think you, I, I invite you to think about the following later on today, perhaps, or later on this week. Behind all we do, and behind all whom we are, is the Lord's grace. I love that word, grace. Is also the Lord's love. There's also the Lord's hospitality, which surpasses all understanding. All of that is behind all we do and all we are. Christ invites us to be transformed by her gesture, by our gestures, in a way that Simon wasn't able to be transformed in today's story. The woman was transformed by gestures of hospitality and love. Christ was transformed by her hospitality and love too. There's all this going on here. Incredible energy. What act of hospitality and love is out there waiting to transform you in this next week? Amen.